This is exciting. It's studio tour time. Hey, what's going on? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Hope you are gonna enjoy this video because it's a studio tour 2021. A lot of people have asked me to do a studio tour video because the last one I did was like maybe three, four years ago. So I was overdue to make an updated video on my studio setup. And this is what I'm gonna do today. Now, there is a bunch of stuff, okay, that uh, are gonna be updated or that I'm gonna change in the near future. Uh, but I still wanted to, uh, to make this video anyways, even if I'm gonna change a few stuff, uh, but I'm gonna keep you updated in the near future once I, you know, I made the changes. But first, before I start this tour, the essential. There you go. I just love this stuff. Okay, to the studio tour. Okay, let's start by this side where I have a tape machine. It's a Tascam 8516B. That is not mine and that is not working. <laughs> it needs like a major cleanup and uh, it's actually a friend of mine that asked me um, to store uh, this, uh, this Tascam, this uh, tape machine uh, for him. He was looking for a, sp a place to store uh, his gear. And I told him, you know what, you know, just store it at my studio and you know, we'll see what's gonna happen. My plan was to initially to work with this, uh, this tape machine, to experiment with it, to clean it up and to, you know, work with it a bit, but that never happened. Uh, just a lack of time, you know, I'm just too busy to, to start experimenting with new gear like uh, this type of gear. Um, so that's why I just never did it. And um, I also have the uh, TAC uh, 16A2, which is made by Amic. It's a, um, it's a console. And same for this, uh, this mixer, I told my friend I was able to, uh, to store it here at the studio. Uh, I mainly use it for the preamps, okay? This is what I use it for. And the cool thing is that on each channels, there's a semi-parametric EQ that I use also when tracking drums. So I mainly use, uh, use the console for the preamps when tracking drums. Um, that's it, you know? Now, um, it's, again, it's a big, it's a big board, big mixer. Um, same for the tape machine. It looks good, you know, you see that in the background of my videos. Uh, but um, it's just a bit too big for the space. So this, like these two units are gonna leave the studio very soon. <laughs> okay, so this is one, uh, this is actually part of uh, what I'm gonna be improving or changing in the near future as far as my uh, control room goes. So I'm gonna end up rearranging this part of my studio and then, uh, you know, it's just just a bit too big just for the use of eight preamps now on this side i have my rack mount which starts with the patch bay that i have on top and this is new i've been you know i worked for years without a patch bay and now that i have one <laughs> um, i don't know how um, I was able to work without a patch bay especially with the setup that i have right now so um, i actually plugged in you know, most of everything that I have that I work with on a regular basis straight into the patch bay and it makes my workflow like easier, you know, so everything is faster to work with, especially when uh, working with, uh, uh, with my preamps or external gear when mixing and stuff. So it's very easy to patch things around. So um, I can make a video on that if you want me to, just leave a comment uh, down below. Uh, next, I have my main interface, which uh, is the AXR4 from Steinberg. Uh, I made a video on this one a year ago, and I'm gonna link like a bunch of uh, videos that I, uh, uh, of the gear that I have in my studio that I made a video on. I'm going to leave all the links in the description down below. So check them out. So the uh, AXR4 from Steinberg is one of them. Amazing interface. I love working with this one. I've been uh, working uh, with this as my main uh, audio interface for the past year. And uh, so far, so good. I really love it. Um, just uh, uh, below this interface, I have my old um, interface that I worked with uh, for years. The Lynx Aurora 16, which uh, are 16 converters basically. Um, and now I hook, um, I actually hook this one to my AXR4 um, via a digital connection, uh, AES ABU connection. So I have eight of the, um, the converters that are going straight into the AXR4. And on these converters, I have the eight preamps 
out of the mixer that are plugged in to these converters that are going into my main interface. Then I have the Creme, which is a stereo bus compressor. Sounds amazing uh, from a company called Tegler from Germany. Uh, amazing sounded unit. I really love this, uh, this compressor. I use it a lot on my mix bus. It has on top uh, a uh, kind of a Poltec type EQ and then the compressor at the bottom. So it's a VCA compressor, sounds very good. Then I have the Stam Audio S8 EQ P1A. Um, I did not make a video on this one yet. If you want me to, leave me a comment down below and uh, I will review or just show you how I use uh, this, uh, this EQ in my workflow. Very good sounded EQ, it's a Poltec type EQ. Uh, which is very nice. Then I have this old guy, the Drummer 1960. It's a stereo compressor and a preamp, uh, which sound very good. Um, now, this is not a recent unit. It's been out for like decades, actually. Uh, I put my hands on this one back in 2006 uh, when I first moved here. Maybe, I think maybe a year prior to that. Anyways, I don't remember, but it's been a while since I purchased this. Uh, this one, I actually bought it used on eBay. Uh, it served me well for years and I still use it. It needs a cleanup, but you know, um, it, you know it's a very good unit. Again, a preamp and uh, compressors you can use uh, as a dual mono unit or a stereo uh, unit also. And there's also a very, very nice instrument input that has a tube dedicated to, um, which sounds very good especially when recording bass so i really like this one and at the bottom i have the 473 from vintic audio four preamps that sound very good they're neve type preamps uh, they have like a uh, like a high and low shelf and uh, you know they just sound amazing again i've been working with these for years and i purchased those uh I think back in 2007 or so. And at the bottom I have the Space Echo RE101, a mono delay which sounds very, very good. Um, it's a vintage type unit. I don't work with it a lot, but I'm actually planning on using it even more now that I have the patch bay set up. Now that is a gift that I received from one of my good friend Jean-Pierre, who just out of the blue decided to give me the Space Echo. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. <laughs> so uh, this is basically what I have here as far as my uh, preamps and uh, audio interface and, and so on, you know. Uh, I'm gonna change that entire um, like furniture type uh, um, unit that I have here so far. I'm just gonna change it and buy like a, uh, like a bigger or a more convenient uh, uh, furniture to hold all of my, uh, my units in case this is gonna come in the near future. So I'm gonna get rid of that entire setup. Okay, now if we take a quick look at what I have on my desk, uh, on the right side, I have the uh, Micro Freak by Arturia. This is a digital synth that has an analog filter. Sounds very good, very cheap actually. You know, I think you can put your hands on uh, the Micro Freak for less than $400 US and it produces amazing sounds, okay? So um, I really like uh, working with this one, especially um, to the fact that I'm actually getting more and more into synthesis and uh, on top of being a very cool and good sounding instrument, it's also a very good learning tool as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, um, then I have the, uh, the Heritage Audio. This is a, um, it's the RAM System 2000. It's a monitor controller. I made a video on this one a year ago. I really love this big knob here, you know, uh, which has that vintage look to it. So very nice uh, controller. This is where I connect all of my studio monitors, uh, which are the ones that you see uh, right here on front. So I'm gonna talk about those right away. Um, so let's look at the, the first pair of monitors that I have on the right. And uh, we're looking at the Kelly Audio IN8, which are a three-way um, monitor system. Sound very good. Um, I also made a video on these. Um, and as far as my main, I would say main uh, monitors, uh, I have the Focals, um, the, um, the Solo 6 BE Classic, you know, a lot of people uh, mix with uh, these very good sounded uh, monitors. And also those little you know, they, they look like Oratones, but they're not Oratones, but the same type of thing. I don't even know the brand of these. You know, someone gave them to me years ago. Very good when mixing to focus on the mid-range only, because, you know, with these, you're not going to get 
any low end and you know no top end whatsoever so you know very good tool to focus on the mid-range uh, i'm gonna get back on the desk and look at the, the fader port 16 which is my control to control cubase uh, that works also for most uh, daws um, it's pretty well integrated with cubase you know not perfect it has a very good integration with studio one which is normal because it's the same company that produces both uh, but it does the job well with cubase also even if it uses the mcu protocol which my good friend dom Sigalas is in love with i'm sarcastic um, then I have the uh, microphone that I actually used on my last three, four YouTube videos. Uh, and this one is the Roswell Pro Audio um, Mini K87. Very good mic. You know, it's a high quality microphone, professional mic for a cheap price, you know, uh, for this type of microphone. I think you can get one for 400 bucks US or 450. I'm not sure. Um, very good sounded mic. Uh, then the ID14, which is my portable interface, the one that I bring with me at the cottage, but I keep it on my desk just to have access to the uh, this knob, you know, the knob that I have on the uh, on this interface, because when I activate the ID of this, uh, the interface, that big knob, uh, will do the same job as my uh, scroll wheel that I have on my mouse. So whatever I'm going to point with my mouse is going to be controlled by this uh, uh, this little knob, which is quite cool when mixing. You want to just uh, uh, tweak some plugins manually, you know, by touching like a knob um, that works very well. So that's why I keep it on my desk. Uh, then I have this guy right here, you know, this little dude. I don't have a name for him. I'm, you know, then it was made by my daughter years ago when she was i think in grade five or six this dude has been on my desk for quite a while you probably saw him on some of my videos and with the look that it has it kind of pumps me up a bit you know when i procrastinate a bit too much or when i'm a bit too discouraged or whatever you know i i see that look and i just want to get back to work and you know produce music and then on the left side of my desk i have the uh, arturia key lab 61 essential uh, which is my main uh, controller to you know to play with my vst instruments when i produce music one last thing here the desk that i have the actual desk it's a cheap one, you know, it's a cheap desk from Ikea that I've been working on for years. And recently I just uh, uh, kept the top of the desk and I bought myself a stand-up desk base, you know, only the legs. And I just put the top of the, uh, the Ikea desk right on top. And that's it. Now I have a stand-up desk, which is actually pretty cool. Um, and I kind of like this type of, uh, of desk, you know, just to, to be able to stand up while working. Now, of course, I do not mix uh, standing up because, you know, as you can see, the desk is blocking my, uh, my studio monitor. So this is not the, um, the, perfect, uh, the perfect setup to mix. However, if I mix with headphones, I'm going to stand up and just, you know, uh, so I can avoid be sitting down every day five days a week you know so this way i can i can just you know stay up once in a while when replying to youtube comments work on my website you know working on some uh some course uh, preps or video preparation stuff uh, just the perfect setup and i bring it back down when it's time to produce music and mix this is also something that is going to change very soon at the top of the desk i'm going to redesign it and put something else so i can add a replace actually this display by a 32 inch 4k display instead of a 27 like it is right now and i want that display to be a bit more uh like further back you know because right now it's like you know, it's not blocking my uh, my monitors but it's it's a bit too close uh in my opinion so that bugs me a bit so i'm just gonna redesign uh the new desk top um you know in the near future so more on that later i guess now you probably ask yourself the question about these monitors that i have here in the back uh, which are actually inside my wall uh, those are dynaudio's uh, m2s you know they're discontinued and they are three-way studio monitors um, i got these when i moved to this uh, to this house back in uh, 2006 and I, you know, I mixed with uh, on these uh, these monitors for years, um, you know, before I just updated my uh, my new monitoring system with what I have right now. Um, so anyways, there's a story behind these, but I'm going to have to put them on sale since I don't use them anymore. I prefer the setup that I have right now to these monitors, even if they're good, you know, just for my taste 
and for the space that I have, I think they're a bit too overkill. Now, if you look at the back of the studio, I have the, uh, the place where I store all of my camera equipment and also my uh, mixing books and music production books. Uh, now, at the back, you know, behind these curtains, what I have are bass traps. Um, those are actually pretty cool. They are actually suspended, you know, and they are not touching each other. So they're kind of floating. And I have like a total of eight or 10 bass traps, you know, uh, for this side of the, uh, the back studio and the same for the other side. So a total of 20, I think total, I have like 24, 25 bass traps. And that is counting the, the ones that I have on top because I also have bass traps uh, uh, suspended uh, right on top, you know. So I also have a diffuser right here at the back of the studio, which was uh, handmade by a very good friend of mine. And not to forget the red couch, which is actually actually not comfortable whatsoever um, so I need to replace this as well so this is gonna is gonna be one of the uh, uh, the thing that's gonna be out of the studio in the near future so that whole part here uh, with the mixer the uh, um, the tape machine and the couch um, is going to be redesigned in the next few weeks or few months. So there you go. So now let's go and take a look at the microphones that I work with. Okay, now for the microphones. I have several mics that I love to record with. Let's start by, I'm just going to go through them briefly. Let's start with the Austrian Audio OC818. Very cool microphone. Um, I actually made a video on this one a year ago. And also the LCT640 TS by Lewitt Microphones. And those two mics um, have some similar features. And I'm actually working on a video where I'm gonna compare both of these microphones. Honestly, it's gonna be a good one, so stay tuned. All right, next, uh, the Jay-Z microphones. I love Jay-Z microphones. I have like a bunch of them, um, like V67. You know, I have a pair of V67. They sound good on almost everything. And I use a pair for drum overheads. Um, V47, a more darker tone to the 67. BB29, uh, BH2, you know, I made videos on these anyways, uh, except the V47, I didn't. But this is gonna be actually part of a comparison uh, video series that I'm working on. So, uh, more on that later. Um, and what else do I have here? Um, yeah, you know, a bunch of dynamic mics, uh, Beta 58, SM57 you know the classic mics a pair of ribbon microphone the mxl super cheap and inexpensive mics you know um, they are ribbon mics you know always useful to have a pair in the studio and uh, i don't use them often but you know but when i need this type of uh, of microphone i have it you know i have a pair so at least i have something to work with a pair of 421s a classic Tom microphones and also um, a guitar amp mics, you know, dynamic microphones. You know, they sound pretty good. You know, a classic. Uh, also a bunch of Roswell Pro audio mics uh, like the Delphos. Um, oh, let me, there you go. Very good microphone. I love the tone of this mic. Um, so, you know, I've been working with the Delphos on vocals, uh, especially, and, you know, it does sound very good. And also a pair of Mini K47, um, which are also very good microphones. Um, I like to use them on drum overheads, um, guitar amps. They sound good on vocals as well, you know, so uh, those are pretty good mics. And for Roswell Pro Audio, I also have the Mini K87 that you saw earlier in this video that I used on my last YouTube videos as my main vocal mic. Also a pair of uh, AKG 414s, you know, another classic microphone, and uh, a 451, also by AKG. Very good mic for acoustic guitars. If you're looking for something like a small diaphragm microphone, this one sounds very good. Hi-hats, you know, acoustic guitar, pretty good microphone. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, no, there's uh, a pair of Rode um, NT5s that I don't use much anymore, uh, but you know, they are, you know, good microphone, a small diaphragm also that I use to uh, work with for drum overheads. But I now prefer to work with large diaphragm microphones as far as micing drum overheads goes. So 
now let's go take a look at my recording room so there you go this is my main recording room um, this is where i record my drums uh, guitar amps acoustic guitars uh, vocals anything you know except virtual instruments of course but everything else um, has been recorded here in my studio i really like this room it's not that big it's not like a huge room it's i consider that like a small room uh, but it does sound pretty good and i like it very much now something that i love about this room is these panels now as you can see i have like those very cool panels uh, which are two-sided panels okay let me explain on this side i have wood which basically is going to create a more live sound to the room you know because of all the reflections but if i turn them around this is what i get some acoustic treatment which is going to make the sound a bit more dead you know if i turn all the panels around to this uh, side of the panel you know so which can create uh, a room that sounds very dead or if i turn them around on the wood side uh, is going to create a more live sound or i can blend you know uh, I can blend the mix of both, you know, which is kind of cool. So it gives me a lot of leverage and a lot of options as far as the sound of the room. So which is quite cool. So very cool design. So this is uh, basically what I have here for this room. I also have a second room, which is a booth, which is on the other side, the right behind the curtain. So, you know, so that is my old recording booth, you know, which I'm not going to show you because it's now my wife's office and she's working right now. So yeah we decided to to use this room since i wasn't using it anymore you know uh, like for the past few years i've been recording everything in this main room and you know nothing much uh in the smaller room we decided to convert this room for now anyways um, as an office for my wife so there you go so this is basically what i have here as far as my gear goes my my studio this is my 2021 studio tour and I'm going to update you on the changes that are going to come in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And don't forget to click that notification bell so you stay updated every time I release a new video. Until next time, take care and see you.